Hey, welcome to Calc 3. I'm going to begin with vectors. So, you think of vectors as kind of like a, a new form of a number, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, uh, you're probably used to use, dealing with like scalars. Scalars just uh, encode one piece of information, but vectors will encode two. So, uh, scalar, like temperature, like it's 80 degrees out, 80, a number that's what you're used to dealing with here in math. Um, now we want to take it up a notch and, and work with these other objects called vectors, and they're useful for describing uh, forces and velocity and things that have two characteristics, okay? Um, we want to be able to, to add them, subtract them, uh, find ways of kind of making products. And, uh, Okay, so let's dive right in here and talk about the component form. I love a vector. And so we'll go ahead and put these things in the XY plane right off the bat. So the book has a the book is kind of wordy, and I'm trying to uh, use as few words as possible when I do my notes. So I apologize if I'm not. Being, uh, following strictly to what the book says. They, they kind of start with just throwing vectors in the, in the you know, plane without even putting a, a x and y axis. So I'm going to start down here where we actually have an xy plane and some little tick marks and all that jazz. So anyways, um, let's go ahead and put a vector here in the plane. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, there'll be an initial point and then a terminal point, and, uh, and it will look like an arrow. So let's put the initial point at 1, 2. Let's put the terminal point at 5, 4. And then draw an arrow from the initial point to the terminal point. What did I say, 5, 4? Okay. So we're going to just, vectors have two quantities, as I was saying. Um, first, it will be the magnitude, which is the length of the vector. And you can get that just by using Pythagorean theorem and then solving for the hypotenuse. Okay. So um, the magnitude will write with this double kind of absolute value looking thing. And then uh, from the Pythagorean theorem, all we have to do is take the square root of the legs squared. So the length of the, the base there um, will be the difference of the x coordinates on the initial and terminal point, and then square that, and then plus the difference between the y coordinates on the initial and terminal point squared. Okay. So in this case, it's going to be the square root of 4 squared, which is 16 plus 4 which is square root 20, which is 2 root 5. Okay, okay so magnitude. The other um, quantity that, that this thing encodes is direction. Okay, so secondly, I'll talk about direction. And you can describe the direction using the slope. Okay, so the easiest way, I guess, is just what we already know. And slope is rise over run, so you take y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, get 2 over 4, 1 half. Um, another way to do it is the angle that the vector makes with the horizontal. Okay, so this angle inside this triangle here, basically. So thinking about the angle. And you could figure out the angle by using some trigs. So the tan of theta will equal opposite over hypotenuse. So this opposite side is the difference between the y coordinates, which is 2. And the adjacent side is the difference between the x coordinates, which is 4. So tan of theta would equal opposite over hypotenuse. In other words, theta is tan inverse of 2 over 4 sins 1 half. My calculator says that it is about 26.6 degrees. Okay. To show two vectors are equivalent, you'd have to show that they have the same direction and the same length. Okay. Um, is that what they're doing in this problem? 
Yeah, so here they're showing that they have the same length. Um, and then they use the slope to show that they, that they have the same direction. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you need both of those things. Okay. Um, the component form I'm going to do next. So, yeah, you can put the, so they have a standard position. Maybe I should do standard position next. So three, standard position. So standard position is basically just take the vector, whatever vector is thrown in your neural app, and put it at the origin. Okay. So... Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So our original vector was at one, the initial point is one, two, the terminal point at five, four, right here. And if you could, I mean, literally um, take that and move it to the origin and keep the same direction. So uh, uh, up one over two and uh, get the same sort of magnitude or distance. Okay. And uh, there it is in standard position. Right. So um, did I give that guy a name? No, I never gave him a name. So we'll call it V. And in the book, they have to use a bold-faced letter. Um, but for us, we'll put little arrowheads over top of it. Sometimes I forget to put the little arrowhead on it. It's just, okay, hopefully that's, that's OK for you. Um, Component form is basically just the, the uh, lengths of the legs of the triangle that thing makes. So component uh, form. So uh, for this guy, you can take the difference of the x coordinates first. So from above, it would have been 5 minus 1. And then the difference of the y coordinates, 4 minus 2. So you would get uh, 4 comma 2. So it's kind of like you took the slope and just put it on its side. So you could see like the slope number here. If you were to lay it on its side, you would get the, the vector um, 4 comma 2, which is kind of the component form of, of our vector. Okay. Um, one thing to note is that the number 0 is not the same as the vector 0. These, these two objects are different. Um, so the, the guy on the left is, a, is a, a scalar. The guy on the right is a vector. Vectors and scalars are different, right? So the guy on the right here is um, this 0, 0 vector. And the guy on the left is just a scalar. And we consider them, there's scalars inside the vector, but we kind of consider them as different objects. Okay. okay. Um, we want to be able to kind of add and subtract these guys. Um, so basically all this junk that you did with, uh, with scalars and algebra, we won't want to be able to do that with vectors. And to begin our journey, what we do is, is look at it geometrically. Okay, so these are vector operations in particular. Um, addition and subtraction, and then also scalar multiplication. Okay. So I'm going to do it geometrically first. I think the book does it algebraically first, but I'm going to do the geometry. And uh, so you, you have two vectors. Okay, we'll put them in, this, in sort of the standard position, vector u and vector v. This one you, this one's B. In order to add them, what you're going to do is put them end to end. So in my first case, I'll add um, vector V plus vector U. So to do it geometrically, you draw vector V just as it is. And then what you're going to do is borrow vector U and put it at the terminal end of vector V. Trying to draw it as well as I can. The sum of those vectors is the vector that starts at the term that at the initial end of vector v and ends at the terminal end of vector u. Okay, so that thing right there is vector v plus vector u. Um, 
the vectors have a lot of the same properties of real numbers with respect to this operation. So you'll, you'll find that vector v plus vector u and vector u plus vector v are exactly the same. Let's see if I can draw. It's the commutative law of addition is, is what we're kind of thinking of for some reason. It's being, so vector um, u plus vector v, you can just uh, first draw a vector u and then put vector v on the end of it. And I think vector v should have been longer or something. But I tried. And this uh, sum is just this guy right here. Okay. So this is vector u. Vector v. But it's actually the same as what we got in the previous picture. And uh, they even talk about uh, if you wanted to create a parallelogram to do the addition. So back on this first picture, you could just reproduce u right here and reproduce v right here. And then the sum of the vectors would be the diagonal of that parallelogram right here. So this is u plus v, or v plus u if you'd rather. Okay, um, subtracting is pretty uh, simple, so long as you are, are willing to kind of stomach the idea that the um, negative of the vector is just the vector going in the opposite direction. So if you have a vector here, which is u, uh, we'll say negative u is the same vector, but going in the opposite direction. And actually what, what that is, is we're multiplying the vector u by a scalar negative 1. Okay, so maybe I should talk about scalar multiplication here while I'm at it. Um, if, you, if you want to multiply a vector by like 2, so here's my vector u. If I want the vector 2u, all I have to do is increase the length of this by 2. So your vector 2u would go way out like that. Um, the vector one half u would just be half the length. So here, one half times u. Uh, negative one half u, of course, would go out in the other direction, I'm running out of colors. Ugh. You can really see that. Negative one half u. Okay. okay. So so scalar multiplication just stretches a vector or compresses it. So what, well, now we can think of the subtraction of vectors in, in this geometric sense um, by addition, right? Because the uh, difference between u and v is basically the same thing as the sum of the vector u plus the negative of vector v. Okay. So uh, again, let's draw the vectors here. I have my vector u. Here's my vector v. Um, v. So to add u plus negative v, all I have to take is uh, u and then attach vector v, the negative of vector v. So the negative of vector v would be like this. Attach it to the end of vector u and then connect the, uh, the, the initial point on vector u to the terminal point on vector v right here. Um, you can also see that vector is just more simply the uh, vector right here going from v to u. Okay, those are the same. So this is uh, u minus v and also this is u minus v. So usually when we talk about the difference of vectors, we'll just um, connect the two tops of the arrows or the vectors. Okay, so here is u, here is v. Um, so to get u minus v, I just take uh, this terminal end on v and connect it to the initial end of u. And then v minus u would just be the same vector going in the other direction. Okay. 
And you can see them doing that. And I don't know why I decided to enlarge that. Thank you very little. Um, OK, I don't want that. OK. Um, so that's the geometric kind of interpretation, which is advantageous every once in a while when we're talking about um, uh, later on when we, we want to talk about uh, uh, describing the movement of an object via uh, a variable, uh, a, a vector value function, rather. So, so that it's not going to go away. Okay. Okay. Um, but in general, when we deal with vectors, we'll we'll just deal with the component form. Um, so I'll just call this the algebraic method. So the, again, the component form are these these things right here, where you're just describing the vector with an ordered pair. I forgot to put my little arrow over top of that guy. Okay. Okay. So um, let's look at an example I took from the book somewhere. They give us a vector u is four comma nine, and the vector v is 2 comma negative 5. They want me to find um, 2 thirds u um, v minus u, so part b, they want v minus u, and then part c, they want 2u plus 5v. Okay. All right, uh, so part a, 2 thirds times u, uh, multiplying by a scalar will stretch it geometrically. What does that look like when you when you do it here algebraically? All you're look, really doing is just distributing the two thirds to each component. So you're going to end up with eight thirds, comma, uh, three goes into nine, three times six. Okay. Um, to subtract, just using the component form, all you have to do is, and it's easy as cake, or easy as pie, or whatever they say. All you got to do is subtract the corresponding components. So um, 4 minus 2 is 2. 9 minus negative 5 is 14. Okay. Um, what else? Did I get those reversed? Yeah, I did u minus v. So this is uh, u minus v. Sorry about that. Let's do v minus u just for completion. v minus u will be 2, negative 5, minus 4, 9 which will be negative 2 comma negative 14, just the negative of that previous vector. And let's see, 2u plus 5v. Let's write it as a component form. So 2 times this vector u, 4, 9 plus 5 times this vector v, 2, negative 5. That'll equal 8, 18 plus 10, negative 25. Oops. And then you just add the components together for your final answer. So you get 18, um, negative 7. Okay. okay. Um, the uh, vectors, along with all their operations and their, their kind of properties here, um, create what's called a vector space. Um, and any sort of algebraic structure that follows these properties, that have these properties, is considered a vector space. Seems like you could you could do uh, not necessarily just playing with vectors, but other things are considered vector spaces. Um, I don't remember any off the top of my head, but uh, let's take a look real quick. Here at some properties. properties. Vectors, and a lot of them are just the same properties that you had for the real numbers. Um, so it's commutative. U plus V is the same as V plus U, right? Just like three plus two is the same as two plus three. Associative property, um, the, you know, uh, additive identity. So U plus zero is U, just like uh, three plus zero is three. Um, inverse properties. And then there's properties with respect to the scalars, which may be a little bit different. You're probably not as used to those. Um, let's just prove one of the properties. So we'll prove the first one, the commutator property of vectors in the plane. So um, we'll 
proof here. We'll suppose uh, vector u is equal to u1, comma, uh, don't use, yeah, u2, where u1 and u2 are real numbers. And vector v is equal to v1, comma, v2. We note Sorry, I put a little period on that. We note uh, vector u plus vector v is equal to, from our definition, u1 comma u2 plus v1 comma v2. And of course, um, from the definition of vector addition, uh, that's equal to u1 plus v1. Um, comma u2 plus v2, and then from the commutative property of addition for real numbers, you can flip those. So that would be v1 plus u1, comma v2 plus u2, and then you could kind of undo that. You can kind of back engineer v plus u, right? So from the definition of vector addition, we could rewrite this as v1, comma v2 plus u1 comma u2 and then by substitution that's equal to v plus u which which is what we wanted to show okay. so um, yeah the commutivity of vectors follows from the commutivity of the real numbers plus um, the definitions that we've established for, for addition. Okay, so you go through and do that. The book does some other one for us. Okay, so great. All right, um, a, a very useful property of dealing with vectors is this theorem 11.2. So a lot of times you're gonna be finding the magnitude of these vectors. Um, let's just note this theorem. 11.2. So basically, if you have a scalar times a vector, you don't have to go through the, the, the task of, um, you know, the square root of the, 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 the uh, component squared. This will save you a bit of time, is what this really is about. So um, an example of where this would be helpful would be something like, the vector v equals um, 4 comma 8, right? You could go through and say, well, this is the same at, the, the, the magnitude of this is the square root of 16 plus 64, um, which is equal to the square root of 80, which is equal to the square root of 5 times 16, which is equal to 4 root 5, right? Um, or you could think of v as, uh, um, four times two, f four times the vector um, one comma two, right? And then to find the magnitude, you can have that four out in front, is, is what this theorem is saying. And then just figure out the, you know, one squared plus two squared um, is four root uh, one plus four is five. Okay. And it might not seem like a big deal right now. It's like, okay, I, I, I can figure out the square root of 80. That's, I don't need your help. I get it. Um, but later on, when we're dealing with other issues, this may, may say, be the difference between five minutes and one minute. You know? And if you have 10 problems that are taking you five minutes each, you are going to not get as much uh, fun out of life. Right? So... Yeah, that theorem I found to be kind of really helpful for us. Okay, um, next uh, we have the unit vector. Um, so this is theorem 11.3 now. Uh, the unit vector in the direction of V. And um, 
so it's called normalizing the vector. So what it's going to do is take any vector you throw at throw at me and turn it into a vector with length one. And sometimes it's nice just to resize all the crazy vectors you're dealing with so they all have the same size. So that's one reason you, you would do this. Okay. Okay, so the the um, way we'll do it, um, the ve unit vector u will equal uh, the vector v times 1 all over the magnitude of vector v. And this thing has length 1. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, actually uh, compute the unit vector for some randomly generated vector here. We have 3 comma 12. So in order to get the unit vector, I need the magnitude of v. And again, we could rewrite this as 3 times 1 comma 4. And so the magnitude will be um, 3 times root 17. Okay. Um, so the unit vector uh, and the direction of v will be um, 1 all over 3 root 17 times uh, 3 12. Okay. So, so, or you can bring the 3 out in front if you wish, and then the 3s will cancel. Um, what I don't want to see, so do not write um, like 3 12 divided by, th this, this notation doesn't make any sense. Okay, so no, 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 don't do that. You're actually multiplying the vector by a scalar. So the scalar needs to go out in front here. Um, you can distribute it at this point if you wish. So you would have um, 1 over root 17, comma, 4 over root 17. I don't need you to rationalize. You could just leave it like that. Um, just to convince you that the magnitude is 1, we can go back and find the magnitude. It should be the square root of um, 1 all over root 17 squared plus uh, 4 all over root 17 squared, which shall equal 1 over 17 plus 16 over 17. I think then you're kind of seeing it, the square root of 17 over 17 which is the square root of 1. So yeah, it has the magnitude of 1. So if you see a crazy expression, like what is the magnitude of the vector v all over the magnitude of the vector v, um, that's a unit vector, so its magnitude is 1. I think in the homework, like one of the problems is like that. They try to, oh, that's such a real problem. It's not really, where is it? Yeah, these problems. Okay. When in doubt, guess 1. Okay. All right. Jeez. All right. Um, so unit vector, uh, finding a unit vector, triangle in inequality, um, so triangle inequality. Uh, basically, just it's just going to say that the um, hypotenuse of the triangle is always longer than the sum of the sides. So um, in notation, u plus v is going to be less than or equal to the magnitude of u um, plus the magnitude of v. Um, I don't usually really use the triangle inequality all that much. It comes up in later math. Like it seems like I beat that to death once I got to advanced calculus. That's where it becomes really, really important. Okay. Um, all right, so there's that. Uh, the next section we want to look at is the standard unit vector material. So it's, it'll give us another way of writing out our vectors uh, as opposed to the component form. Okay. And, uh, so section four, we have standard unit vectors. And um, basically, we can write any vector in terms of these two vectors. So the first one, uh, 1 comma 0, and the second guy, um, 0 comma 1. Okay. And visually, you can see the picture over here of uh, i and j. Um, all right, so we want to be able to uh, write 
vectors in the component form or in the student unit, unit, the standard unit vector form. Um, so let's look at one. So here's my example. V equals negative 3, 5. So I'm going to rewrite it as a sum, negative 3, comma, 0, plus uh, 0, comma, 5, right? And if you added the components back together, you'd get back to where you started. Now I can rewrite that in terms of i and j by um, using scalars, right? So this is the same as negative 3 times 1, 0, plus 5 times 0, 1. And then you could do a substitution, so negative 3i plus 5j. And that's the same thing, just in a different form. Okay. Um, I don't really care which form you use. I, I tend to like the component form better, but you know. Okay, so there's that. Um, do we want to do example five or something? Sure, let's do example five from the book. Let u be the vector with an initial point 2, negative 5, and terminal point negative 1, 3. Terminal point negative 1, 3. Um, let v equal 2i minus j. Write each vector as a linear combination of i and j. Um, Oh, then, then part A and part B. Okay, so anyways, let's figure out what vector U actually is in the first place. So vector U um, as a component, uh, and then the component notation, so I'm going negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. 3 minus negative 5 is uh, 8. Okay, so there's that. And then we could rewrite that as negative 3. You just basically take the first component and slap it on the I, take the second component and slap it on the J. All right, so part A, they want, well, I just did part A, I guess. Here's part A. Part B, they want uh, W. So uh, what is W? 2U minus 3V. And, um, all right, so it's probably easier to do it in component form, but uh, I'm wrong. So 2 times negative 3I plus 8J. Um, minus 3 times 2i minus j. And then you just kind of distribute these scalars to the components. Okay, so negative 6i plus 16j minus 6i plus 3j. And then combine like terms and you should have your answer. Right? So negative 12i uh, plus 18j. If one is zero, so if you get like zero i, you just don't write anything. You just write the j part. OK. okay. Um, we can describe our vectors using angles as well. So I mentioned that before. And in particular, we could use cosine and sines. So let's talk about that. Uh, direction as an angle. So let's suppose we have our vector positioned in the standard location with its initial um, point on the origin, and then it shoots out here some terminal point. Okay. Let's drop a vertical here, get a right triangle going, and uh, so we have um, this vector, call it whatever you want, vector v, I guess. And in component form, we'll say it's v1 comma v2. So v1 is basically this distance here, and v2 is this distance here. So if you have a theta, if you're dealing with theta here, um, you can kind of use trig to um, rewrite the components. Okay? Also noting that the length of the vector then is just the magnitude of the vector v. OK, so I note then that cosine of theta must be equal to um, adjacent, which is the first component of the vector, all over hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of the vector. And then you could solve for v1, which equals the magnitude of the vector times cosine theta. And then over here, you go sine theta, the same game, right? Except now we have opposite, which is v2, all over hypotenuse, magnitude of v. And then solve for v2, and we get uh, 
magnitude of V sine theta. Okay, so an another way of writing the vector V um, in uh, using this direction, um, this angle thingamajig, is uh, magnitude of V cosine theta, comma magnitude of V sine theta. And this becomes kind of a kind of helpful when you go to um, various physics problems. Um, so. Yeah, so like this tugboat problem. Let's try this one. Example seven. Um, I'll, I'll probably more likely just do like a free body diagram. So I have my vectors. I'll put, pretend this is my tugboat, and the vector is pushing against it. I'm going to draw this this vector here like this, and then this vector here I'll draw like this. So this is actually my force one. And this is my force two. Um, the force that the, the tugboat um, experiences, or what they call the resultant force, is the sum of these two forces that are acting on the tugboat. Okay. Or well, I guess these are tugboats. The, the ocean liner, um, the force the ocean liner experiences is the sum of the forces of the tugboats. Okay. Okay. So to add the two forces, I need the uh, component form of the forces. Okay. Um, I know the uh, the actual magnitude of the forces is 400 pounds. It's just given in the in the story, the, the beginning here. Each boat is exerting a force of 400 pounds. So I know the magnitude of the force is 400, and then I have to do cosine of something, 400 sine of something. And then for this guy, it's also 400 cosine of something. I just have to figure out the angles. So I, the angles are kind of given in the picture. Okay, so this one in the picture is negative 20. And um, this guy right here from the picture is positive 20. So I, I just put those in. Um, first one, 20, negative 20. And then go to your calculator and add them up. Um, I've already done this beforehand. So the resultant force, I'll just call F, is going to be seven, approximately 751.75 comma zero. And uh, so what are they asking for? What is the resultant force on the ocean liner? Well, there, there it is in component form. If they want the magnitude of it, it's pretty easy because one of the uh, components is zero. It's just going to be, you know, 751.75 squared plus zero squared, which is the square root of something squared is just 751.75 uh, pounds. And it's going in the direction completely horizontal. So it's perfectly horizontal. Yeah. They put their answer and yeah, okay. So that's pretty much what I got. Okay, um, here's a, another one of these we're adding. The weird, weird thing about this example eight is you may not be familiar with bearings, but uh, it says that the airplane is traveling at a speed of 5,000 miles per hour with a bearing of 330 degrees. That means it's going around like this. When you're doing bearing, it, you go from north and then all the way around 330 degrees, so almost 360 degrees. So uh, this is the, the, the direction of your airplane. Okay. Um, so 330 minus 360, that, this angle here would be, would be 30. And then 90 plus 30, this angle here, which would kind of give us our theta for the uh, vector that describes the airplane. I don't know how else you want to write it. A, if you wish. Um, the direction angle cosine from the positive x-axis would be 90 plus 30 is 120. Okay. And then sine 120. It's going 500 miles per hour. They'll consider that to be the magnitude. And then there's wind involved. Okay, So the wind vector, you have to figure out. It's north 45 east. So north um, east is this direction. 
west and south. North of 45 east, you start at north and then you go in the direction of east. So going 45 degrees east would put the wind going in this direction. And uh, because this angle is 45 degrees, this angle is also 45 degrees. And so you could describe the direction of the wind with 45 degrees. Plus 9, 45 degrees. And it says it's going at 70 miles per hour, so you can put that in there. And then they basically want the resultant um, direction from that. So you just add the two things together, like they're doing here, and that would give you your, your answer. If they want the speed, um, yeah, they want the speed and then they want the direction. So so let's let's go ahead and get our, get our calculators out here and try to do this. Um, The heck is my calculator? Well, I guess I'll go to Wolfram. I don't like Wolfram because they don't do decimals that well. So 500 cosine of 120 plus, oops, plus 70 cosine of 20. Forty-five. It should be forty-five. Two, three, four, five. Um, really, negative two hundred. So that would be in this direction. That 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 sounds fine. So negative two hundred. I'll just approximate two hundred point five. Um, and then we want the same thing. Whoops! I see a mistake I made. This should be sine. Sorry. Let's make these both sine. Three sine, three sine, and we're looking at four eighty two five ish. Um, so the magnitude of the resulting direction, whatever we want to call it, so I just call it R. So magnitude R is the square root of those two guys squared. 2.5 squared, 2.5 squared, plus 4.5 squared, and then we need the square root of that. Squirt. Right. It's about 5.22.5. And then to get the angle, you use that tangent um, relationship. So tan of theta equals y, which is 42.5, all over um, x. And then do the tan inverse of that. So theta is tan inverse of this thingamajig. Of course, the output of that is going to be in the fourth quadrant. <coughs> Sorry. Decimals, right? It's negative 67.43. So that's the calculator answer. We're still not in the right quadrant. Because that's going to be down here. We actually want to be over here, right? So you got to go um, 180 and then subtract away this uh, 67.43. Okay, so the actual angle. Maybe minus that thing. <clears throat> so uh, one one two. Um, if they want it as a bearing, then then you actually have more jump to worry about. One one two point five seven. <clears throat> Um, 
So what I would do is go 180 uh, all the way over here and then add in the 67 and that would give you a bearing. So uh, if they want the bearing, plus the 67, or actually it's, two, it's 270 plus that to get the bearing. So the bearing is 337.343, because it's, it's actually from here, right? So it's a 270 right to here, and then you have to go the extra 67.43. Let's see if that's right. All right, they just wanted the one or two, so we're good. Um, all right, so <clears throat> hopefully that, that gives you some uh, scaffolding you need in order to get the uh, homework done here. Um, I might make another video for homework problems here in a second. Uh, I'll leave it at that, and we'll see you next time.